Okay, this video will be going over uh, enthalpy of phase changes and we'll be looking at how they're related to intermolecular forces. Um, so we're going to pick uh, the, the two molecules I picked just, just to look at our two familiar examples. And um, they're, the IMS, the, the uh, analyzing of them is not too complicated because I don't want to get into, you know, how to analyze IMS. I just want to look at how they're related to enthalpy of phase change. So first of all, we have water. Um, okay, and I'll make like a little chart for each one. So the, uh, the enthalpy of fusion for water is 6.02 kilojoules per mole. And the enthalpy of vaporization is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. So for one mole of water, it requires 6.02 kilojoules of energy to melt it. Okay, remember this is, uh, this means melt. It, if it, it means melt, or if you're going in the reverse direction, it also means freeze. Okay, and then the enthalpy of vaporization means to boil, or if you go in the other direction, it means to condense. Um, so one one direction is uh, endothermic, this one is endo, and this one is exo. And similarly, when you boil something, it requires heat, so that's endo. And if it condenses, it's going to give off heat, which is exo. So what's going on with these numbers, 6.02 versus 40.7? Well, if you look at the molecular view, molecular view for water, um, then you see that, so what, what, what we're trying to do with fusion is melt it. So to melt something, you're going from solid, so you're going from solid to liquid, and the, the solid view of water is very very rigid okay it's highly ordered with lots of extensive hydrogen bonding and I'm trying to be consistent by using green dotted lines for IMFs in my videos here so um, when you're when you're trying to melt something these guys are, are like just kinda like separating a little okay so they're like pulling away from each other and the whole uh, so the whole system is just kinda like the the whole system is just kind of like loosening up here okay so this one is, is kind of like like shooting off over here and then this this water molecule is like shooting off over here but they're still bound a little bit okay that's the key thing is because we're we're just making a liquid we're not going to gas just yet okay so this just um this just uh, separates just a little bit but still that's kind of like the key thing here is it's still um, has some IMFs as a liquid. Now, when you're a gas, okay, now it's different. Now these guys are going to be, com and, and as we know from our last unit or our last uh, chapter, is when we went over gases, this is what makes a gas is when there's no IMFs or makes an ideal gas anyway. So these guys, so this might be a liquid, okay, and then, uh, so this might be a liquid, and then when heat starts, when heat starts entering into this, okay, now these guys are, um, when heat starts entering it, now these hydrogen bonds break, and, uh, and when those hydrogen bonds break, now these, water molecules are free to go off to the sides okay, and become a gas so it's going to take way more energy to do that to break all of those hydrogen bonds whereas when it's a solid um, you're just kind of loosening up the material so it's not going to take that much um, energy to do so so you're generally going to see uh, heats of fusion or enthalpies of fusion you're going to see those much lower than heats of vaporization it's because uh, you need to break. Um, you need to break all available intermolecular forces. 
IMFs. Okay, so now we compared just uh, one molecule to itself, and we looked at delta H fusion, delta H vaporization. So let's let's add a different molecule so we can see compare across molecules. You know, compare the same numbers, the delta H fusion, delta H vaporization. So here we have um, so here we have propane, and uh, I, I I looked up the values for diffusion for propane, and uh, I came up with 3.21 kilojoules per mole and for delta H vaporization I found 15.7 kilojoules per mole okay so now um, since as implied by our title this is related to IMS we need to do an, a, a little IMF analysis of these molecules so as we know uh, water for its LDFs it's got, uh, let's see, oxygen has um, eight electrons and then each hydrogen. So it's got 10 electrons, so that's weak. But as we all know, um, in terms of the uh, polarity it has, we know we all know water is very good at doing hydrogen bonding. So, um, and now when we look at propane, so propane is, uh, if I draw the, uh, the uh, structural or the Lewis structure look something like this. So these H's. So we have a linear molecule. It's more or less linear. Okay, and uh, it's got no polarity to speak of. So for polarity, it's nonpolar. And for LDFs, it's uh, let's see for carbon. For carbon, six electrons. So eighteen plus eight. So we have twenty-six electrons. It actually still qualifies it, 26 electrons, still qualifies it as weak. So um, so we have weak and nonpolar. So this molecule is, you know, it's it's pretty bad at, at sticking to itself, to other propane molecules. So therefore you see a, a much smaller heat of fusion. So it's not going to take as much. So lower IMFs mean a, a lower enthalpy of fusion so which makes sense it won't take as much heat to uh, to make the uh, to make the molecules wobble okay if, if we're looking at this picture here so and uh, same thing for uh, the heat of vaporization so if there's low IMFs again that means it it, it won't take as much energy to uh, break down all the um, IMFs on propane. Okay, so um, we're going to apply this a little bit to uh, a heating curve, but that's going to be, uh, I'm going to save that for our uh, next tutorial, is a heating curve. And then finally, our, our last installment of videos on enthalpy of phase change will be an actual uh, problem where we use these values and we also use the uh, our old heat equation okay so uh, I'm gonna end our tutorial here